Kathy, so what is money? And what do you think economies are for? <laughs> we have to look and move beyond money. I think sacred economics, first and foremost, is a way to snap people out of their sort of fixed idea of what economies and economics are for. What if we framed an economy as something that's about creating joy and possibility and a state of caring for people? What would that economy look like? Are we living in a competitive model based on greed and scarcity? And if the answer to that question is yes, to any degree, how would we envision moving towards abundance and sharing? Women deeply believe that an economy should serve the greatest good for the longest time, without fail. Maybe even thinking beyond money in terms of um, sustaining the planet and making sure that people are fed and that there's enough to go around. Which means we get to invent what we would like for it to look like. Some of you may know this, this metaphor, what happens to a caterpillar when it's becoming a butterfly. These things called imaginal cells start to form. The caterpillar actually goes through this amazing process in a chrysalis and something that's being held by and turns into something so much bigger and spectacular than you could ever have imagined or dreamed of and it can actually fly. All you have to do is look at the history of movement building throughout the world and you will see that people have made shifts that everyone at one point thought were completely impossible. What are we going to reform as? And I think it's going to be a quantum leap. I think it, it, the potential there for a paradigm shift. Philanthropy is about the betterment of humanity. The word actually means for the love of human beings. It, it doesn't talk about money in the roots of the word philanthropy. But if the purpose really is wealth redistribution to serve the greatest good, Let's just get down to doing that. The inspiration of the gift economy, which native people, indigenous people, their vision and their systems were based on abundance, not scarcity, and sharing, not competition. I don't hold on to my time, and I don't hold on to my talent or the gifts that I have, and it made no sense to stockpile money when it's a currency that can transform someone's life. So time dollars, by contrast, are helping in a lot of communities all over the United States where conventional money is scarce. Private ownership by a few of very valuable and important resources on the planet is not acceptable anymore. And this is exactly the kind of conversation I think we want to have more of. What you're feeling right now is your own greatness and your own greatness unleashed. June Jordan, the poet, said, we are the ones we have been waiting for. She meant you.